So, hey everyone, um, this is going to be more like an uh, informal sort of workshop. Uh, I gave some context yesterday about what we're doing at Open Earth. I'm going to go over that again just to get more context. But what I, I rather hear is from people that are preparing data sets, working with data, how we can sort of help them uh, get that data into the hands of cities. So, the idea is to try to think about those challenges, right? How do we get more use out of the data into uh, people that are implementing climate actions uh, at cities. So, um, if you want, in the meantime, while I present, there's a mirror board. Uh, you can go through the the link there. Uh, there's like a first uh, thing where you can present yourself, put what, like what are your interests or what you would like to talk about about how to use better data. So, if you wanna uh, go into the mirror as as we go, it's just bit.ligi, which is like for inventories. Uh, and we don't need to only focus on GEG inventories. We can think about other ways of using data for cities. So, for example, things that are not necessarily related to emissions, but are relevant for cities uh, in, in doing climate action. Um, let's see if this is okay. Uh, and another thing, we're looking for lead data engineers. So, if you know someone or uh, are interested, please go to our website, you can find there. Um, and yeah, for context, so at Open Earth, we're a, a nonprofit. We work at the intersection of climate action and emerging tech. We work with a lot of other organizations that are uh, pushing for uh, climate initiatives, uh, like United Nations, uh, World Bank, uh, city networks like C4, TG, Com, ICLE, and others. Uh, we've done a couple of other products that are mostly related to their climate accounting as well, uh, current pricing. Uh, we've explored some nature accounting, so giving value to natural assets um, as well. And, but now we're mostly focusing on how to help cities uh, progress in their decarbonization journeys. So what we found out by, by talking with, I don't know if this is, yeah, I um, we're talking with a lot of cities and city experts um, and reviewing the data is that although cities represent most of uh, consumption emissions, right, as, as urban centers, um, they don't really have tools to, to try to tackle those problems, right? Uh, in order to tackle those problems, they need financing and for financing, they first need to know where they're standing, right? Where's their, their baseline? Um, what are the what's their inventory in order to have a climate action plan that can be funded or financed? But by a lot of there's like a lot of money uh, through development banks, but it doesn't get to the hands where it needs to get, uh, especially in global south cities. Um, so that's one of the first blockers we're trying to tackle. Um, only five percent of cities have GEG inventories. Uh, usually, global north cities are those. Um, so that's where the the money is going for uh, climate action. And um, there are studies that show that whenever some national select cities start tracking their emissions, they're more likely to act upon them, right? Knowing what's happening. Um, and same thing with emissions data on, on their commitments, right? Uh, cities, uh, a lot of cities don't have uh, climate commitments because they're, they're missing their data. Um, so when we studied uh, we, and we talked with experts and, and cities themselves on how they were doing their their climate action processes. Uh, it's it's a, a process that has a lot of friction, right? Collecting data takes a lot of time. There is uh, a lot of problems in it. Political problems, that means they need to go to different departments, uh, ask for data. Data is usually messy, hard to use. Um, takes a lot of time for people to respond. Sometimes they don't even have the data. People change during uh, the political process, so they lose connections, they need to start again. I think today uh, one of the talks mentioned that um, a lot of departments in the same government didn't know they have the data from other, other, other departments. So trying to, to collect all that is a, is a big process. And especially cities don't have that much, band, that much bandwidth or resources, especially global south cities, right? Maybe they have like one person that's doing um, like environment, which has everything in it. So it's not just climate, it's everything that relates sort of like to the, to the natural world. And it's very hard for them to move forward with this. There's very little tools. Some tools exist uh, from the climate, uh, the city networks, like, but they're like big excels that are very hard to use. They need experienced staff to use them, takes months of training. Um, and usually 
people end up building their own tools because those tools are too complicated. Um, so that's where we want to help out, right? So what we 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 started working on is called City Catalyst, and what we're doing here is we're trying to reduce the the efforts in data collection. Uh, so instead of spending six months for a four-person team to get all the data and start building a GG inventories, how can we leverage um, third-party data that's ready to use? Usually this is spatial data, remote sensing data that has global or regional coverage that we can just apply to a city boundary, right? Uh, that has these challenges as well. That's what we're trying to work on, right? So we've really collected a lot of these different data sets that exist, uh, that are open. But we still have gaps on a lot of uh, sectors that exist. Uh, we'll go into that. Um, the idea is how do we make it as effortless as possible for a city to just have their inventory have, having to collect data, right? How we can leverage as much spatial data to cover as much many sectors uh, in the as granular way as possible. Uh, but there's a, a, a task there in identifying what those data sets are where they're at, what transformations need to be done in order to use them. Uh, and then when data can't be found is how do we help actors collect their own data. So our, our, our solution has a bit of both those, right? Like using third-party data, connecting that, and then helping them collect their, their own data when third-party data isn't available. Uh, the way we see this sort of value chain is there's um, organizations or, or, yeah, organizations or institutions that are doing the, the actual raw data set collection, right? So satellites, basically. Um, you have Planet Labs to work with, NASA, we have ESA, uh, and, and more. Uh, then you have the actual data products, right? Uh, which I think most people here are working on, on how do we convert satellite data into something that's use case um, specific or, or tracking some type of activity data or some type of um, calculation for that. Uh, uh, we have climate trace that work with, Sky Mapper, uh, Google EIE, etc. And I'm sure there's a lot of many that we could put for where people are working on right now and that would be interesting to hear about. And then the, that data and this is where, where we uh, enter is in more on the, the use case specific for the actual end user, right? So in this case for cities that are trying to build a GG inventory, those different data sets or data products need to be adapted to a specific framework. In this case, it's the GPC, GAG inventory framework. I can go into it, it has different sectors, different subcategories, and it needs to, to follow a sort of uh, process. Um, so our tool helps, helps with that, right? It helps uh, easily integrating into this data sets, we harmonize, we transform the data so it ends up in the in the output that cities need, uh, which for now ends up being an Excel, right? But at least uh, that's what the disclosure organisms are asking for. Uh, and that hopefully will go evolving as we go. Um, but for now, we're putting all that into, into some uh, uh, files. Um, so this should go this way, right, okay. Um, and as we collect all this data, we're building an open API for others to be able to use it, right? So each time we integrate data, we try to put it in the same pipeline uh, that people can use uh, depending on the, the data provider or the category of what they need to be able to, to just make this as integrated as possible. Um, so uh, yeah, I go into this afterwards. Another thing is of the way we think about data is, so we're dealing here mostly with cities that don't have resources, right? Uh, ideal data is usually uh, a blocker, right? Because we try to have perfect data, especially when we come from an academic background, we try to make it as, uncert as certain as possible, right? Reduce uncertainty. Uh, but sometimes we just need one starting point for people to have a baseline and start acting upon it, right? We call that good enough data, right? Which has a, a strict boundary with data is inadequate, where it's too uncertain or it's, uh, maybe uh, too low resolution, or maybe uh, methodology is not good enough to track or be used in a climate action plan. Um, so good enough data we call things that help us, uh, first, they're useful for cities to act upon it, right? That's like the, the main boundary. They need to be good enough to act, right? Probably there's better data, we can get to that afterwards, but first we need to be able to give them something that helps them 
start having some action, right? We there's time is of the essence in this 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 climate change challenge. So everything that helps them get moving is is useful, right? So good enough data needs to help them identify key sectors and activities in their economy. So we we'll we look at the sectors afterwards. It needs to be able to track progress, right? So if they do an initiative. They need to be able to see if that was uh, useful or successful or not, right? If data is too uncertain or uh, uh, yeah, too much uncertainty and you can't track progress, then it's probably not useful. It needs to be able to, to set up a baseline on the evolution of that uh, progress. Uh, it needs to be helpful for uh, drafting climate action plans and be useful for finding financing uh, for those plans. Um, a bit more uh, information of the C40 uh, framework, which we're using, what well, every city is using, because that's the, the, the standard. Um, it's it's organized, by, or the, the funding organizations for this were C40, WRI, and ICLE, uh, which define the, the two categories uh, and, the, and the sectors. And uh, it's mostly stationary energy, waste, transport. That's like the basic, that's called basic, um, inventory, a GPC inventory, if it covers these three, which are the main ones for cities, and then industrial uh, uh, processes and agriculture or uh, FLU or FBU, that's for the basic plus uh, GPC protocol. So um, yeah, if if we can, let's go to the to the mirror board. I'll explain that a bit, but ideally this can be as interactive as possible. I'd rather have people sort of like explain what they're working on and try to think about, hey, okay, how can we use, how can we, bridge the gap between what you're working on and how a city could apply it, right? So if this is, as we've seen, forestry, that's useful for other cities as well. Uh, if this is grasslands, right? What needs to be done to get there? So I'll go into the mirror board, but you have the, the URL there if you want. And first, just to see if, I don't know if people have used Miro before, uh, but just to see who's, who's engaging, we can start just putting the name of people that are here, right? Uh, your organization, uh, what you're focused on, right? So for, for example, here is me. If you have the, this is the URL, if you want to get, get in, right? GGI, you can get with your computer there. Um, and then as, as we go start that, as, as we start getting that, I will go into also some of the use cases, um, so some of the data sets that we're using, that we can cover those. But first, if you want to start getting here in the meantime, just so we, we can go into maybe intros of people that are interested in engaging. Um, so uh, let's see, this is our okay. Um, so just to, to go into some of the use cases of data sets that we're using so far, um, so for climate trace in the, so climate trace is a, 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 an organization that's uh, convened by different organizations, right? So a consortium They're using uh, spatial data to, to track emissions. I can go into their, if you haven't seen them, they're doing really cool stuff. Al Gore is sort of like their, their spokesperson. Um, so they have, they're tracking most facilities in the world and their emissions. You can also see them by, by country of what they're doing. Um, so for example, you can see by different, let's see, right. Uh, by different sectors, right, that they have, they're tracking this by countries as well uh, and using uh, satellites to, to measure emissions to be able to track this and track progress. Uh, they have a dashboard as well, right, I think they have this country inventories, you can see as well what they're doing. Really cool stuff. Um, so, for example, for the, the, the solid waste sector, um, they, they've done this machine model, right, that estimates solid waste emissions on a global scale, so they cover the whole world uh, by aggregating data from diverse sources, right, they use um, the US EPA's landfill methane outreach program, waste atlas, and other data from other waste sites, and use global plastic watch as well um, to be able to, to build uh, the model. And what we had to do in order to be able to use it for our specific use case, which is um, adapting all that data, but be able to use it for cities, right? Because it's, it's a, a sort of a, a point data uh, at, at the moment. It's doing a reverse geocoding, right? In which we have a, a set of low codes, which are uh, identifications for cities, right? So they can be associated 
to those cities, uh, then adding up all the data for the different time periods seem to have an annual value, right? And then we integrate them into the API. So when you look for a city, you look with the local and you can get all that information, right? Ideas for the API to be able to use that, um, that code for, for all types of, um, of cities, right? So each city you find, you can get all the data that comes from different uh, data sets, especially spatial data sets. And for the Edgar data, right? Edgar is a global a sector specific uh, data set that has uh, fossil fuel CO2 emissions, right? Um, that's mainly based on IEA, which is the International Energy Association and national specific emission factors. We had to do here, is, so this is a, a gridded data set of um, the grids are 0 0.1 uh, each, right? And in order to be able to apply to city boundary, what we did is we, we found how much of each grid um, was inside of, of the boundary. So the proportion of, so for example, here it's almost half. And this one, it's the full uh, entirety of the grid is, and then proportionally uh, applied it to the, to the city based on how much of the area of each grid was inside of the boundary. And then of course, add all those up in order to get the city and same thing for, for emissions per year. Um, so those are two examples of data we're using. Uh, in the map we have here, we're gonna go over um, different data sets that we identified for every subsector. So here, uh, I, I show a bit of the, the, the map we've done just to understand how it's built. And I think this could be useful also if you're looking for data sets, you have a specific data sets for each one here. So basically, we've divided this into the main five sectors of the GPC, right? So you have stationary energy, waste, uh, transportation, IPPU, AFLU, but I also add here others in case you're working on another data set that's relevant, that could be relevant for cities, but you want to showcase it around. Uh, leave it for people to find out afterwards to explore the idea is to make this uh, map public in case others are working with spatial data and they want to link where data can be found. Um, the legend that I'm using here is green is if they're global data sets, right? So we have global data sets. That's good because we can cover uh, the whole world. Uh, you can see the green here. Also, if a subsector has the green, you see it. Yellow if it's just regional, so we can see where we have gaps. The green check mark if it's verified for the emissions use case. Uh, question mark if it's potential, right? Because maybe we need to identify it further. And then squares. So this I don't know if this is the easiest um, legend, but squares are the data that's already emissions. So we'll find here. Okay, this one is a square. It's emissions data. Uh, around the rectangle is activity data that could be transformed into emissions, right? So you have. Uh, something that relates to land coverage and with some emission factors you could turn into emissions that could be relevant as well. I think most people here are working more on what we call activity data, um, but that can be transformed afterwards into, into emissions data. So for stationary energy, we have residential buildings, commercial buildings, manufacturing industries, energy industries and others, right? As an example for things that come uh, for in residential buildings, emissions that come from emissions from fuel combustion within the city boundary, data sets that we're using, we found are Crosswalk Labs. Crosswalk Labs is a, like an American startup. There's public data up to 2015 that's useful, but the rest, the most up-to-date one is private uh, or paid. Uh, we're working to, with them to see how we can uh, make that available. But Google EIE, if you haven't, explore them yet, has uh, public data. Some are private, some is public. It depends on the city. The city needs to um, uh, sort of accept to make the data public, but they have buildings and uh, transport data, which is GBC compliant that can be used for this. So for example, I think when I said this is open, um, so you can explore building emissions, transportation emissions, right? Uh, see where it, how, how it's built, where it comes from, um, and you can customize it as well. I don't know if, I think, yeah, here you can customize it, customize it uh, just to, if there's anything you want to change as a, as a city official. Uh, they also have transport emissions, right, where you can see what they're doing. Um, so we've collected those, Edgar as well. I've put the links here in case people want to look further uh, and to see 
which data set has each. Um, so that's for residential, commercial buildings is similar, same data sets. For manufacturing industries, uh, in case people are working with this, I've put also the, the files for, for example, Climate Trace. So see what Climate Trace has the data. if we can find it easily here. So Climate Trace has all the data you can download if you want. Uh, some is spatial data. You recognize it by which ones are heavier. Um, I think they have stuff to improve here on understanding what type of data sets are. Some are points, some are polygons, others are just tables. But you can find here for every sector the data they have. Um, so I've identified, this is useful for us because we're building this, we're just plugging all these data sets into the tool, but I'm sure it could be useful for others. Um, so for example, for manufacturing, you have steel, cement, aluminum, pulp and paper, chemicals. Um, you can find them here. Uh, same thing you have if you want crosswalk labs, which is US emissions, uh, and Edgar is global as well. Uh, so here you see if it's yellow, it's uh, regional. If it's green, it's global. Um, so you have different ones. So same thing here, uh, you'll see waste, you'll have climate trace and Edgar as well, uh, but others we have gaps, right? So we go to waste and these subsectors are super relevant, especially for cities. And there's no data set we've identified yet on that could be used for this. Um, so the idea here is if, if you're willing, if you have any information regarding this, uh, you wanna sort of also pitch the work you're doing uh, I, I put this again, just if you see this. Pitch the work you're doing on how it could be used and we can contact later. Uh, you can start putting uh, where your work could apply to some of these things, right? You can add us either a post-it here, just comment uh, different colors or add us a comment if you want, right? On work you're doing. But there's other useful data sets that, that we've also been asked by cities. So for example, climate risk, uh, urban forestry, something cities are super interested in because they, what they're doing right now are these global south cities is they're going and counting them with a the paper. So having data that can help them do that will be super useful, especially if it's a global scale, that we can just plug it in and give it to them. Um, so some data sets we've, we've also reviewed for activity data, for example, the land use land cover data of the Open Earth Monitor could be used, it needs uh, some transformation in order to be used as emissions. Um, but activity data could be transformed into emissions data as well. Uh, we have other potentials from climate trace that are not confirmed yet. Uh, others from open monitor, right? But something also I wanted to, to see, because maybe this can live like even after the, um, the conference, let's say, is other stuff that are relevant to, to be able to make sure that this can get into the hands of actual users that are implementing climate action. Like, are there any business model challenges, for example, right? We need financing to keep on working on this, financing to make this scalable, to make this global. Uh, like uh, we, we could go further into that as well. Um, cities usually are paying customers or could be paying customers, especially lower north cities. Uh, but there's also a lot of funding that's destined to cities that could be unleashed for this, right? So we're doing work with uh, C40 right now, which is this um, network of cities. Uh, and they're, they're understanding what data sets exist and how much it would be needed to invest in order to get this data sets into the hands of cities. So if there's anything here you found like a challenge regarding business model, it's like, okay, I need more funding if I actually want to make this useful enough or, 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 or getting, um, or making it more, either making sure it will be updated for five years more, right? Or making sure it can have a global coverage, right? These are things that are interesting to put. Um, so yeah, I, I see people here already playing with it. Uh, feel free to, to put some ideas here. If not, we can just like talk about it. Uh, I thought this, this, uh, this, is what, this was useful for me to put it on a, on a paper, so to speak. Um, so if anyone has anything or a question that could be related to how we get data into action, which is sort of like our main objective, that would be super useful. Or maybe any ideas of data sets that could be used for for cities or for us to make sure that, that we track. Um, so yeah, if you're if you have any ideas, feel free to, if not, you can just write it. Maybe sometimes it's easier to, to write it down. Um, but yeah.
that's a bit of what we're building. So this goes into the, the platform, right? Every data set will be connected into each of the fields of an inventory, just to be able to, to build, build an inventory. Get some water. If not, also feel free to, to contact afterwards. Uh, my email is pretty easy. Um, it's just, let's just put it here. It's Joaquin and Open Earth. Uh, because we're actively trying to get more data sets and we are trying to build the business model for, for data sets to get into the hands of, of cities or paying customers uh, just to make sure that, that they, they, they turn into action. But yeah, uh, I think that's it. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>